Greetings, citizens of the internet. Actually, uh, I don't think that was a compliment. Just called my five subscribers like Discord once. <laughs> Hello internet and welcome back to Heliophobian, hosted by Heliophobian, and yeah I did have an entirely different video plan for today, as well as a very different audio clip for this last sentence, which I would have played if I wasn't voice cracking every 3 seconds, but due to this very peculiar situation, involving a YouTuber who basically never gets into any drama, I decided we'd rest on the laurels of filming a reaction video today, firstly because I'm pretty sure I'm like 10 minutes away from Sony Pictures and Jojo Siwa giving me copyright strike for reacting to a music video karma, and secondly, was already recorded. So yeah, today we're going to be talking about the tech YouTuber Marquez Brownlee or NKBHD, who the average non-tech YouTuber viewer probably recognises from Will Smith butchering his name in the final actual YouTube Rewind in 2018. Yeah, if I control Rewind, I would want Fortnite and Marquez Brownlee. Anyway, for tech reviews, he's basically your go-to guy, alongside fellow ADHD editing guy who overuses the acto effect on Sony Vegas, and guy who doesn't know how to treat his employees well. He has over 18.7 million subscribers. And yeah, unlike 99% of all the other channels I talk about on here, I'm not going to give you a quote unquote brief history rundown of his channel. Because firstly, it's not really relevant. And secondly, what really do you think I have to say about his first video showing him golfing as a 13 year old kid? You got bloody uh, MKB480P here. But now we've established that, let's move on. On the 14th of April, Marquez uploaded this video called The Worst Product I've Ever Reviewed. <laughs> And essentially in this video he reviews the Humane AI pin, which released earlier this month in April 2024 and was developed by two former Apple employees. And essentially what this pin was made to do was to clip to your chest and you could use the AI to talk to it, make gestures, take photos or talk to an AI powered assistant powered by OpenAI technology with OpenAI CEO Sam Altman actually being one of the top investors owning 15% of the entire company. But the one big issue with this is that the execution was absolutely terrible. It's supposed to just answer questions but one it's often slow because most of these requests go to the cloud who designed the Washington Monument finding designer the Washington Monument was designed by Robert Mills Two, it's often wrong I asked it what's some good Asian food in the area and over and over again it thought I said Ash? you have to constantly babysit the battery and charge this thing and keep it charged multiple times per day. It's a little too heavy. This pin cannot set a timer. This pin cannot set an alarm. The photos look pretty bad and the videos look even worse. They max out at 15 seconds. The projector, it's just not very readable. And <laughs> there are no apps. Hence the title of the video. Well, his video, not mine. Mine is just some sort of clickbait one to get views. I mean, come on, $230 million and no app. I so unfinished. What console did the team think they were working on this one? Despite that, he did give a very fair introduction to it, which I'm not going to play because even though I do need to fill time, there's another YouTuber with an entire YouTube channel involved in all of this. He may want some views or something, although he could afford to give me some of the money, uh, yeah, please do. I need to buy a billion dollar mansion for uh, spreading racial unity. And that's my like to dislike ratio destroyed because I brought in a political topic for a joke for no reason because it's not going to land. I don't even know where I was even going. Oh, okay, there we go. Yeah, bad review. Even though it was sort of fair. And a bunch of venture capitalists got really angry at it. Such as this man, Daniel Vassallo. He looks like an airbrushed Jeff Bezos. He made this tweet on April the 15th, which got 11,000 likes and 8.9 thousand replies, stating, I find it distasteful, almost unethical, to say this product is the worst you've ever reviewed when you have 18 million subscribers. Hard to explain why. D did you not think that might have contributed to why you're getting like roasted everywhere? But with great reach comes great responsibility. Potentially killing someone else's nascent project reeks of carelessness. First, do no harm. And then the tweet ratioed it with 59,000 likes from like this Doge profile picture guy at Billy M2K who says, I find this post distasteful, almost unethical. Perhaps companies shouldn't release stupid garbage. And also by the same token, you also have hundreds of thousands of followers. Why are you trying to do harm to this guy's reputation? Ah, actually, I've got a sub right here. Eh? He, he's trying to break it. Next is a take from this AI tech bro, known as Alex Finn, I've never heard of him in my life, but he advertises himself as building an empire on X. I think that speaks volumes about the level of intelligence we're gonna get right now. And he also made a tweet on the 15th, reading MKBHD bankrupted a company in 41 seconds. Bit of an exaggeration, but okay. A slight criticism from a big YouTuber, let alone calling the product horrendous, is enough to make a company go bust. I wanna go bust. 
Fear is so much more powerful in 2024 than you can think. I mean, sure, but why aren't you whining about all the legacy media doing the exact same reporting? Because, look, even if NKBHD didn't make his review, the negative reputation would have killed the company anyway. The same information would disseminate. It would just take a bit longer. And just for your knowledge, Alex, it isn't a bad thing for consumers to feel like they actually owe the working product. Whining, oh no, it will hurt their sales. Good. Preventing scams from getting more money, I guess, is one of the few virtues of capitalism at this point. And also for someone to have that level of trust that they can just like destroy a product immediately You do realise it doesn't just like come automatically Mark has actually had to become a sort of expert in his area To get people to take him seriously Like look if I had more than like 5 subscribers right now And promoted like a VPN or something None of you are gonna buy it But if Mark has advertised the same thing I don't know I'm not bloody Dora I don't know what you do Anyway, that's my commentary and last night at the time of recording on the 17th of April 2023, Mark has actually put out his own response video to all of his called Do Bad Reviews Kill Companies, which has 3 million views at the time of recording. And I'll just play you a few brief highlights from that video. So there's been a lot of interesting discourse lately on this topic. There will be, you know, some negative reviews and then a company will eventually go out of business and then the internet poses the question, do bad reviews kill companies do bad reviews kill companies or do bad products kill companies i yeah I, I do have a lot of thoughts so two of the biggest examples that have been pointed to especially on twitter were the fisker ocean review that i did and the humane ai pin from a couple days ago so the fisker saga was pretty well documented but in case you missed it i reviewed a car had a pretty horrible experience with it, documented it, published their review on the Autofocus channel, and then a few months later, the entire company appears to be on life support, like likely filing for bankruptcy soon. And now this startup, Humane, you know, they dropped their first product, this pin. I review it, it's not super positive. A lot of people are saying the same thing. And I don't even think Humane is going anywhere, by the way, but I think there is some pretty simple logic we can use to decipher what the, the real danger is to these companies, which is, do you still get a bunch of negative reviews and then die as a company if the product is actually really good. I don't know, but what I will say is that Heliophobian's videos are amazing and he doesn't have enough subscribers, so uh, please subscribe, 97 points. How, how is it that high? Basically, everyone who's ever seen this channel, because uh, this is somehow my best one ever on this channel. You're not subscribed, uh, please subscribe. Anyway, yeah, that's basically the end of the video. He basically goes on to continue discussing how he gave feedback to the creators of the Razer phone through his video. And they actually fixed a vibration motor and even invited him out to try it. And look, in defense of Humane, at least they themselves, compared to all these tech bros on Twitter and stuff, seem to have taken it somewhat well. Although I don't know how much is them just trying to hide the pain. But basically, their PR manager, Sam Sheffer, tweeted the day after MKBHD uploaded his initial video, stating, an honest, solid review, Marquez. All fair and valid critiques, both for good and the bad. Feedback is a gift. We reflect and we listen and we learn and we continue building. Yeah, this is just so soppy. Yeah, this is me right now reading it. And of course, since the legacy tech media are dead, they also sought to make a little bit of ad revenue off their two cents on the situation. Of course, by accusing the critics that I just mentioned of being racist. And look, at first, I genuinely dismissed like all of it because it's probably just some leftist newsroom trying to culture what everything in existence. Although there is somewhat of a decent point to be made concerning the fact that Mr. Who's the Boss made a video first with a similar title. He also has over 10 million subscribers and I showed his clips earlier. And his video also got millions of views, but none of his drama surrounded him. Now if I start reciting the great replacement theory and claim the Muslims are taking over, a bunch of extreme right wingers will give me a bunch of money to fund this operation. Great conclusion to the video. Anyway, overall, my thoughts on all of this are, I guess, well done to the product creators for actually making a shell of a working product, at least there's something to improve, and it's not an absolute scam. But on the other hand, you had infinite money and didn't ship with, like, any basic features like apps or integrations. And as for the critics, you're beyond stupid. And as for me, I need to fix my work schedule because I've cut out, like, a good seven or eight minutes of audio full of bad jokes and rambling. But you can subscribe to this channel if you want more of. And follow all my social media, which is at Heliophobian, besides Twitter slash x where heliophobian has an underscore and until next time adios epic gamers